To begin this video, I think we need to define the term lightweight e-bike. We're talking sub 20 kilos, smaller battery and therefore shorter range, not a particularly powerful motor, maybe ride and look a bit more like an acoustic bike, probably have a mid travel suspension setup a bit more like your average trail bike. Now let me define what I'm looking for in my perfect lightweight e-bike. Sub 20 kilos, maybe sub 19, I'll take that. A battery capacity that I can choose to suit the ride that I want to do. And a motor that provides enough torque for the steeper climbs when I really need it. Most importantly, suspension and geometry setup that can deal with anything that a trail center all the way up to a double black diamond at a bike park can throw at it. So I've had a bit of an issue with lightweight bikes for many years. Many brands have put their designers to work producing a lightweight version of their full fat bike, or maybe even an electric version of one of their trail bikes. But it's always been at the more trail end of the spectrum, less enduro focused. Don't get me wrong, some manufacturers have had great success in doing so, but plenty have suffered a bit of a compromised approach that has never really worked for me. However, the bike that we're talking about today might just get a little bit closer to what I'm looking for in a lightweight bike. We're talking about the second generation Kinevo SL. The bike that I've got here is the expert model, comes in at 8,500 pounds. You can also buy the base spec comp model for 6,500 pounds or the top of the range S works, which is 12,500 pounds. So let's look at the spec of this bike. We've got a full carbon frame and really neat internal cable routing. 170 mm of suspension front and rear. That Fox X2 rear shock really is excellent. We'll get more onto that later. And a 12 speed T-type GX transmission. Tram code, four pot brakes, big rotors, and a set of alloy Roval wheels. 320 watt hour internal battery with the option to carry a 160 watt hour range extender on the down tube and the latest Mahler 1.2 motor providing 50 newton meters of torque and a peak power of 320 watts. And funnily enough, one of the standout things for me has actually been the cable operated one up dropper post. Although there's a few issues with that, which we'll get onto later. So let's talk about the motor. Now I couldn't get the cranks off, so uh, sorry about that, but uh, Hopefully it's enough to demonstrate to you what this thing looks like. This bike has the same motor from the second gen Levo SL and as a lightweight motor, it really excels. Specialized have done a good job of incorporating this drive unit into the frame. It now produces 50 Newton meters of peak torque and 320 watts of peak power. You will be probably disappointed if you're stepping down from a full powered e-bike, but if you compare it to the previous generation lightweight motors that provided around about 35 Newton meters of torque, you will be pleasantly surprised. The delivery of the power is super smooth and the cadence band I think has actually got quite a bit wider. You especially notice it at those lower cadences when on the previous generation of motor, you'd almost get no assistance at all. I think it still emits more noise than say a TQ motor, but it's significantly quieter than the high pitched whine that we used to get from the first gen SL. That's apparently because the motor manufacturer, Marla, has incorporated this honeycomb structure, which helps dissipate the sound coming from the unit. I've also been told by Raceco Cycles, who act as an authorized service center for Specialized here in the UK, that the new SL system has actually been one of the most reliable that they've come across so far. And that's a huge factor if you're considering shelling out this amount of money on a new e-bike. Let's talk about the battery. Now the KSL has a 320 watt hour internal battery and that weighs 1.82 kilos, significantly lighter than your average full fat e-bike battery. Here it is in fact. Um, now I removed it from the frame. Uh, you can see it there, hopefully. It's not easy to get out. You do have to drop the motor to remove it, which is a bit of an inconvenience, but I can't think of many instances when you'd want to remove it. You also have the option to run this, the 160 watt hour range extender, but that comes at an additional cost of 340 pounds. Something to consider if you are thinking of buying this bike. 
I personally love the option to choose my battery size depending on the length of the ride that I'm going to do. However, I'm not keen on sacrificing my bottle cage just to include one of these. There's plenty of space within the frame design to actually house both, so it's a bit of a shame that Specialized haven't done that. The internal battery life for me is okay, but for heavier riders, they might find it quite limiting, and especially those that are wanting to climb much steeper terrain. So it's quite likely that on most rides, you will need one of these. I'll touch briefly on the app. It connects almost instantly and there's plenty to play with if you enjoy customizing the power delivery. It also has quite a clever setting to help maximize the power usage depending on the length and perhaps the elevation of the ride that you're planning. One thing that I would love to see is some integration with my Garmin smartwatch. Maybe so then we could have heart rate information and even route planning on the display on the top tube. One thing that I know others have picked up on is that this second gen SL uses the exact same frame design as the first generation from three years ago. And in my view, that's not entirely a bad thing. Yes, the seat tube angle could be a little steeper and the seat tube itself is compromised by a pretty short insertion depth. The seat post just sits too high for a lot of riders, including myself. If you're a shorter rider or you just have shorter legs, this could definitely be a significant concern. The rear suspension design really is a work of art. It's more like something you'd find perhaps on a specialized demo or enduro. A six or maybe four link frame design, depending on how you define the linkage, paired with the X2 shock make for a properly capable build. This thing is a seriously capable e-bike and probably the best all-rounder that I've ever ridden. So in that case, who is this bike for? If you're an e-bike curious trail rider or enduro rider, or you enjoy spending your weekends at the bike park and want the benefits of a motor, but don't want the compromises that come with the added weight of a full fat e-bike, then look no further. For the past six weeks, I've taken this bike to my local trail center and it was fast. I've ridden proper steep off-piece tech and it was incredibly confidence inspiring. Honestly, riding this bike on steep tech is noticeably easier than on a full fat e-bike because you simply have less mass to slow down when it gets a bit out of hand. I've also taken it to Bike Park Wales and I've hit and pretty much cased every trail there uh, with the exception of perhaps the pro jump lines. And honestly, I couldn't think of a better bike for that environment. Some of the trails actually drop you below where the uplift picks you up. So having the motor to get you back up there, particularly when you're wearing body armor and a full face helmet, is a really helpful thing. Genuinely, I couldn't think of a better bike for that environment. I'd say for the beginner to average rider, the KSL would definitely make you a faster rider, but not necessarily a better rider. The bike is extremely flattering and can often provide a bit of a comfort blanket when the going gets tough. And for the more experienced rider, the descending behavior could be seen as a little dull. Comparing it to the more playful Levo SL, a lively and engaging ride, this is a lot more sedate and requires a lot more input from the rider to get the maximum fun from it. Saying that on straighter and more flowing trails, this thing absolutely rips. The speed you can carry on the full 29er setup is really impressive. If you are considering buying a second gen SL, but you've been a little on the fence because there's not many upgrades over the first generation bike, then I would share your concerns. However, after spending the past six weeks on this bike, I now don't want to give it back. The only negative I can really put my finger on is that high seat post. But I have been riding the S5 frame and at six foot tall or 182 centimeters, I probably should be riding the S4. Don't let the restrictions of the seat post insertion put you off. In all honesty, I thought it was going to be a bigger problem than it was, but having ridden a lot of the really super steep terrain and also some of the jumps at Bike Park Wales, I didn't find it to be an issue. Once I got used to the bike after a week or so, honestly, it wasn't even something that I thought about. Even with the reduced power output of the SL motor, I still keep going back to this bike. I've got a full fat e-bike in the shed, but time and time again, the Kinevo SL is the bike that I keep picking up. I honestly haven't ridden an e-bike this capable ever before. The reduction in overall weight has transformed the riding experience for me and combining that of 170 mil of travel and enduro geometry, I've enjoyed every ride. It's even brought back my love for a full 29er and that is one thing that I did not see coming. Let me know your thoughts of the Kinevo SL in the comments below and please subscribe to the channel for more content like this plus regular episodes of the EMTV podcast.